was very little discussion of technique with Casals. He actually admired my, my ability on the instrument. Hmm. He didn't admire my musical instincts because at one point uh, we were talking and, and he said, uh, you have in your playing, Casal said, you have in your playing a little bit of uh, Fritz Chrysler and I don't admire that. Oh, I see. <laughs> so uh, there was uh, immediately this, this feeling that he was not happy with my musical interpretation. You know, I, I can tell you a story about Casals. Uh, my first piece that I worked with him was the D minor suite of Bach. Mm. And uh, he sat opposite me and he said, now I would like you to ca uh, copy all my bowings, all my fingerings, and listen to me play. I'll play, this, I'll play the piece for you and you just mark your music so that when you come and play it for me, it's my ideas. And this went on for, for about three weeks, many lessons, uh, to the point where I played the whole D minor suite and I had all his fingerings and bowings, and he was quite pleased. And we would play it together and it sounded like one cello. I even tried to imitate his vibrato. Oh my God. <laughs> which is not so easy to do, but uh, he finished playing and smiled, and, and I said, and I was rather frightened because I, I had something to say to him which I wasn't sure was, he was going to take lightly. I said, Mitra Casals, now I have become just a second copy, and not, there's nothing original about what I'm doing. And he. He said, well, I'll show you. Put your cello down. And he played the D minor suite. He changed every fingering. Huh. He changed every boy. He played a performance that were an astoundingly beautiful performance. And when he finished, he smiled. He said, that's your lesson. If you have worked the suite and you know exactly what you want to do with it, then you have the privilege of changing everything and making it into an improvisation. 